welcome 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 today i am having with me kalpesh patel presently in england and the person whose grandfather the grandparents moved to africa during the time of british empire and the parents moved to africa initially he has been cultured and brought with the indian values he was just 1 year old when he moved to england kalpesh patel is an international speaker and trainer he has touched the lives of more than 50000 people in the last 12 years he has co-authored many books and he loves speaking about the topics of personal transformation and development today we are here to discuss with mr kalpesh how to convert your dreams into action and results welcome kalpesh brother mr kalpesh how are you doing i'm fantastic thank you very much for having me on your show ashish it really is uh, it's a blessing to be connected with you the universe has brought us together divinely and uh, i'm really looking forward to sharing with you uh, some of my learnings and my journey over the the next few uh, calls that we have and touching more lives it's uh, it's a beautiful thing that we're connected here thank you so much for having me thank you thank you uh <clears throat> kalpesh what i could see from your uh, speeches and uh, the previous discussions and till date as i know you you have deep rooted indian values and even you talk mm-hmm. about that the books like power of now and the yoga and the every other thing and you also said that the first talk on personal development uh, may be rooted to the arjuna's uh, and krishna's uh, we say the uh, the speech and the samvad dialogue the dialogue <clears throat> yes. so what do you say on that you know what and i i often uh, talk about this in my talks because i'm so passionate about it you know i i was introduced to personal development 23 years ago and it changed my life completely but it's interesting because before that you mentioned i was raised hindu i was raised with values and culture and all the great things that our roots give us i'm so glad that my grandparents and my parents didn't give that up when they moved from country to country because we have a lot of the learnings but what i didn't do was look at it from the way i look at it now with all of the awareness i have having read literally hundreds of books uh, that are very popular globally every book i read instantly references straight back to the origins of our books and i'm like this is insane you know it's like people are just rewrapping it as new information and making like look what i found look at look at my discovery and it's like no this was discovered thousands of years ago already and documented is under our very noses and yet we miss it because it's there we take it for granted because it's uh, made me not not well um delivered by people so what i'm doing now is i spend my time linking the dots and say saying you know what okay let's let's start linking the dots when when we look at all of the original scriptures that you know that predates everything in the world that exists today then you can see how everything links back to those words those that wisdom that knowing and understanding and you know we talk about in 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 the vedas and everything we talk about science we talk about knowledge you know that the west is excited about scientific discovery today but they're only backing up what we'd already documented scientifically thousands of years ago how did we know pre telescopes that there were nine planets and you know the stars and astronomy we were studying all of this without the tools because we had mastered the ability to use our mind to connect to the universe and become one with it we've lost that over the years which is cool my goal in this lifetime is to get as close to that again as possible and inspire as many other people to own their soul to own their ownership of the universe you know we talk about <clears throat> one of the things i love about uh, the, the hindu philosophy is that we don't worship uh, god in a way in a religious way you know it's a philosophy it's a philosophical approach to religion so we don't have one you know people say we're idol worshipers and i laugh and I'm like, we don't worship idols no we use um you know murtis we use idols if you like to represent and remind us daily of the presence of greatness 
of the universal power inside of us. And so, you know, we give people the most options. You know, you can reach God in our culture any way you like. You can reach God through elephants, through monkeys, through humans, through stones, through any. And, and ultimately, when, when we understand that we are God, that everything that is the universe is us, when you understand that simple, basic philosophy, then all of these things about the law of attraction and the power of now and the secret and all of these things, they're not secrets. There's no, <clears throat> there's no um, kind of mystical. It's, it's often missold as mystical as this kind of, you know, out there idea when it's actually so simple for me. It's like, no, hold on. We create everything in here. Is up to us, which is why two people can experience exactly the same event in completely different ways. That's for me the, the simplest way to share it, that you can have an event happen and two people will see that event from their own eyes, from their own experiences, from their own judgments, from their own opinions, and have completely two different stories about the same event. So that shows you it's nothing to do with the event and everything to do with what we decide to do with the events. Okay. So this is what I bring into I people's have, daily life. I have very interesting story about you. The first very interesting fact about you is you never worked in a job. Correct. In, in, <laughs> just, in just 11 years of age, when uh, we all were in schools and even you went to the school and during the lunch hour, you were found buying and selling chocolates. And that's where uh, you had the first lesson of uh, business. What, yes. What's, what's about that? And then... And then <clears throat> you went to selling cars and you understood a very basic concept of like you buy something with X value, add some value or trade it, get your dollars or get your money in between. Yeah. Yeah. I, I picked this up very early in life. And so you know, I'm one of the curious souls. I always ask questions about everything and all children do, but my questions are always about why do some people have a better life than others? Why do some people stress and struggle? while others thrive and create, you know, that they go on and, you know, that they, who are these people that drive the nice cars, live in the nice homes, travel? Why is it only a few people do that? And the rest of the people only dream about this. So as a young child, I was always curious. I was always attracted to bright things, shiny things like, you know, anything that was like new cars and new homes and, you know, just, just success. When people are dressed well, I was like, wow, look, they look so good. I don't know why that is, but it, this was inside of me from a young age. <clears throat> this led me to asking questions that maybe other people didn't ask. My questions were around, how do I get there? How do I go from where we are? We were very poor when we came to England. They, we, we came here with nothing. So growing up was a very uh, tough experience. There were you know, over 30 people living in a four-bedroom house in London when we first came here for the first few years. And that's an intense environment to live in. And they were all working full time. They were working multiple jobs, my parents, my uncles, my aunts, everybody, to make ends meet and to, to, to move forward. But eventually I saw that we progressed and we did progress because the focus for the whole family was never to stay in a job and it was always to get out of the rat race. So every conversation in the house with the 30 plus people was always, we work hard now because that's what we have to do to get ourselves back into a stronger position. But eventually we must become our own uh, masters of our own destiny, if you like. We must own our own businesses. So for, for me, this was drummed into my subconscious from a very young age. So at the age of 11, when the opportunity arose, my dad had bought a shop recently, and I just, one plus one was two for me. It was easy. I could get uh, wholesale prices for chocolates and you know soft drinks and crisps for my dad and sell it to children at lunchtime. And I, I discovered this thing called profit. And profit is fun. Profit is so easy when you keep it simple. I thought, and, and I started moving small items initially and like you say by the time i was 18 19 when i got into university i was buying and selling cars so the concept remained the same you know the, the entrepreneurial spirit was already deeply embedded inside of me and so, so the whole topic, idea well, <clears throat> never the, the idea of getting a job it's like get an education to get a job why i always say why why do i want to get a job to pay the bills to make money well that's not the only way i appreciate that for a lot of people that's a way for me I'm already making money. So the education is going to limit me because I was making a full-time income in my lunch hour. Why would I get the education so I can make a full-time income working a full-time job when I can earn the same income part-time in my own business? Can you see it just didn't sit with me? So then the rest, as I say, is history. I went on to, to get into the business world 
have had many, many different kinds of businesses over the years that I've created, launched, mm -hmm. and I've helped now thousands of people globally to do the same. Okay. Let's come straight to the topic. How can one convert his dreams into action, mm -hmm. his dreams or passions into actions and the real results? Fabulous. So one of the things that I'm very passionate about, and I say, listen, to every audience I come across, once you understand the power of dreams, as adults, we forget to dream. We get so caught up in survival. The system drags us down. We work so hard. We then have a full-time family. We have a full-time life that we don't make time to dream. And I'm not talking about dream when you're sleeping. I'm talking about dreaming when you're awake. When you can learn to dream, I used to dream in the classroom always looking out of the window. And I continue to do that today. I make sure that I practice consciously dreaming every opportunity I get. And, my, and the power of building that muscle to, to be fluid, to think. My mom was saying to me this morning, I have breakfast with my mom every day. I'm so blessed that I get to do that. And this morning she was just telling me, Kalpesh, always remember the one basic simple rule in life. Nothing is impossible. The minute you think something is impossible, you're losing touch with the power of human beings. Everything that is in the world today, everything that exists in the world today is because at some point somebody decided it was possible. And she said, when you live on the side of what's possible, then you can create. When you live on the side of impossible, your creativity gets shut down. And so the power of dreams, when you learn to dream automatically, the impact of building that dream muscle don't get attached to the dream. Don't, it's not a fixed thing. The, the, the whole purpose for me of being able to dream is not to chase every dream, mm -hmm. but it's to create them, the dream that is personal to you. So dream everything. And then with this muscle, you focus it to what is important to you in your life. And that naturally will inspire you to get up and go. People lack motivation. They're tired. They don't know what to do. They're bored. They're frustrated. All of this is because they don't have access to this very simple and yet powerful, most powerful tool. People look for motivation. And I often say motivation is temporary because it's from the outside in. <clears throat> Inspiration comes from within. You don't depend on somebody else to get you fired up. You wake up fired up yourself because you've been practicing so well the art of dreaming. And then linking that, the energy that the body creates when we dream, and when you live in a world of possibility, it opens doors. You then connect directly with the power of the universe, and you see openings, you see opportunities, you build connections. How did we meet? For me, there's no coincidence, right? You're on the other side of the planet, I'm over here. Yes, social media you know, speeds up the process, that's all it does. But for thousands of years, the right people turn up at the right time. Social media just speeds that process up and allows you to access a broader range of people globally. But the concept remains that when you tune in, then the universe works with you rather than against you. It conspires for you rather than conspires against you. It's a simple what law. Is, what is your advice for the corporate professionals, basically? Uh, many of the corporate professionals these days are uh, hmm. tied up to the jobs and many of them are working for 12 hours. And yes. some of them even 18 hours also. I have my friends and my previous colleagues, they are still working for 18 hours or uh, mm -hmm. even 16 hours or even 10 hours. Like they go to home also and then they, from home, <laughs> they work the, uh, they do the office work from the home. And mm. like you are talking about dreaming of luxury, you are talking about dreaming of uh, getting out of that corporate job. You are telling people to dream something uh, bigger than themselves which they haven't seen so what is the idea that somebody can dream of when the person cannot see that uh, physically let's say I'll tell you like mm. if I'm in a deep uh, pit how can I think of because I could see the pit only I'm there in the pit yeah. I'm uh, let's say uh, I'm there in five feet uh, deep pit I cannot see sky I cannot see stars I cannot see moon how can I think of stars and uh, the moon and the other things? Because I could see nothing but the deep pit. Right. Same is the case with the corporate professionals. They are Absolutely. just stuck up to a certain amount of job salary. They are just stuck up to a certain amount of uh, uh, rewards. 
they yeah. are dreaming of living the luxurious life they are dreaming of uh, owning the big corporations they are just thinking but the reality is nothing could be think like we say and you can say think out of the box how can somebody think out of the pit out of the pit Gosh, you've, you've hit, there's so many things to say about that one little sentence or, or paragraph that you just said. My mind is free in many, many directions. So I speak to companies a lot, right? So the first thing that I'm deeply passionate about in companies is to make sure that the corporation is respectful of the human being. Because anyone that's working 16, 17, 15, 14, 10 hours, 12, it's ridiculous to try and squeeze so much out of a human being that they're not human anymore. And that's what we do. We dehumanize people oftentimes in corporate structures. When in actual fact, human beings, if you can measure effectiveness, then we need to give human beings more time to be creative, to dream, to spend time with their family, to spend time on their hobbies and doing the things they love. When they show up for work, they're going to be so much more productive for you because they're looking forward to coming in and earning their keep, their worth. But also they look forward to everything else. Life happens in a blip, we know this. The few years we are here, 80, 100 years, whatever that tiny number of years is, it's not long, it's gone in a heartbeat. You only realize that when you kind of pass. For me, when I hit 40, you know, I'm now 49. The last nine years, I sit there and go, wow, like really, life really is like that. You know, the first 10 years, slow motion the next 10 years fun still you remember the summers you remember the fun times no pressure when you hit your 20s you finally discover the world of work and that's where the journey begins of time speeding up because you now have responsibility by the time you hit your 30s maybe you've got a home that you're paying for you've got your own family you've got more responsibilities and we cut co we're collecting all of these extra responsibilities but not creating a way to free ourselves around that. So for me, it's uh, to get the most from your corporate career. The people that climb the most are the people that know who they are, know what they want, and are very focused in that space. If, if that's what it is you want, if you want to climb your corporate ladder, of course you put the extra hours and you do all of that stuff. But if you forget along the way to build a life, at some point you will be exactly that classic corporate person that's got all of the titles, that has a bank balance that never got touched because you're too busy earning it to enjoy it. And eventually you're going to end up in the same place everyone else dead anyway. They often say that, uh, you know, that the, the worst place to be on your deathbed is looking back wishing that you've done things differently. So for me, I say, listen, whatever corporate environment you're in, make sure you know what you want from your life, not from your job, from your life. And then where does your job fit in to that bigger picture? And then be the best you can be for your husband, for your wife. Be the best you can be for your job, for your boss, for your uh, team, for your people that, that are looking up to you or across to you at work. Be the best you can be for your health and your well-being. Be the best you can be for your parents, for your friends, your social, your community. This is the most effective way to live a powerful life. And, and I don't talk about dreaming about things. And Things are great. We can collect them, but things come and go. I, I talk about developing the, the dream muscle to dream a way out of the stressful situation that we get ourselves into. <clears throat> Meditation unlocks so much power. Something that we often forget and overlook, especially in the Indian culture, because it's so in our face. It's so, uh, you know, when a fish doesn't know it's in a bowl, it's that kind of a situation. <clears throat> you know, we are, we are the masters of meditation in India. It's okay. everything that existed. And yet today, Everyone in the West is meditating and the Indians are running around like rats on a hamster wheel, round and round. It's, it's, it's flipping. It's, it's funny watching from here. It's flipping. It's doing a, three, a 180 degree flip. I'm like, what's going on in this world? <laughs> I'll put that the question again. I'll put that question again. You are stuck up in a job. Yes, sorry. I, I don't stuck up in a job with some amount of salary, 50,000. One lakh, Babies. one lakh fifty thousand, or in your dollar terms, US dollars, thousand dollars, or yeah. fifteen hundred dollars, or two thousand dollars. Yeah. Now you're stuck. You have you're stuck. money, but you don't have freedom. Even that money is also not helping you because 
in india we talk about that uh, have you heard of that concept of called 99 rupees there is a story about that that uh, uh, once there was a barber who was very happy and the king was there king could see the barber as very happy king said how could he be very happy whereas uh, i am the king i am i am having everything i am not happy have you heard this story no i can't okay so the king okay the king said to the uh, the uh, uh, the other person who was there with him the the guide the king said to him how could he be very happy the the guide on the, the someone who is uh, consulting king on every uh, major decisions he said okay give me one day's time i'll show you so what he did was the guide or the advisor of the king just uh, kept 99 gold coins in the barber's house in the night and in the morning barber could find 99 gold coins and that's where he started thinking where is that one coin these are 99 coins where is that one coin and from that moment and since that time he is searching for one coin and now in the evening when the barber came to meet the king king said king could see some tension and problem on the barber's face what is what is it are you you are not looking happy today the way you used to be so no no that's okay that's okay that's perfectly fine but the advisor said to the king after the barber went could you see the tension and problem on his face it's because of the 99 gold coins now he is living the life the way you are living because he is unable to meet that or keep that as 100 or put that as 100 he is yeah. to make it 100 yeah so great whatever, whatever amount of time whatever amount of money i have you have they have yeah. the universe has it's just 99 and we are yeah, going towards that one. and that one yeah. is now completed so go yeah. ahead it's a great story and you know life is simple i always say simplification you know if we stop chasing things and start creating everything life gets easier so baby steps for me is when you're stuck in that situation where you, you i'm not saying you you leave your job you have to have a job so you can keep a roof over your head food on the table clothes on your back and look after your responsibilities of course we must do this but again touching on what i said earlier you must make sure that you have another life outside of survival and what is that life going to look like design it don't just let it happen by default design that life what is your relationship like with your partner what is your relationship like with your children your parents your friends design all of this and then fit it into the diary uh, you know scribe it and it starts with baby steps you have to interrupt yourself when you're on that rat race the the wheel is spinning non stop you have to literally jump off take a step back and say right what do i actually want from this thing called life what am i going to create and then take baby steps because often times the difference between turning dreams into reality and having pipe dreams which is what most people dreams are i often hear people say oh, i want to drive a ferrari and they don't even have a driving license or you know they they've barely got a car that starts in the morning and i'm like let's not go so far that you're paralyzed by the enormity of your dream so great you want a ferrari plant that in the back of your mind in your subconscious but what can you do today to take the next step forward from where you are that's all that matters everything else is an illusion Once it's an illusion that, yeah it's an illusion that creates disillusion when something is so overwhelming and so out of reach it just remains in here and it disempowers us because we get frustrated that is it ever going to happen will i ever get there you know what Correct. you may never get there but where you can get to is the next step so i often say that don't worry about don't try to look how far you can see a lot of people think that's what it's about it's not about seeing how far you can see because human beings are built with infinite infinity we we have infinite potential so how far we can see is infinite but it's also irrelevant what's important is how far can you go from where you are now to the next step and I always say climb the small hill first when you get to the top of the small hill you'll always see a higher hill then climb the higher hill then you'll see a higher one your perspective will always grow with you but to just look at the top of mount everest and stand at the bottom and just be wondering is pointless can you see what i mean i'm getting 
I want to say, take the steps that are relevant to where you are today. Where are you today? What can you do immediately right now to impact your finances, your well-being, your relationships? What are the things you can do if you've got a business, your business? What can you do right here, right now, today to instantly make a difference? I'll give you a very simple analogy. Yeah. Let's say you decide that you want to improve your health. I see so many people stressing so this is a great one. They don't already have time because they're putting all of the hours into work. And then the few hours they have off, they're spending in the gym. That's not necessarily the smartest solution. So rather than taking that time away from what is also equally important, which is your family and your social life and everything else, take the stairs instead of the lift. Take, uh, you know, stop the taxi or your car, park a mile down the road and walk to work for a mile and walk back to the car and then drive home. Take, do something you can do immediately that doesn't take away from somewhere else. When you have lunch, pause. What does my body need? Not the, what does my body, not what does my tongue want, but what does my body need? It kills me when I see McDonald's in India. I was thinking again, no, we avoided this for so long. Have you not seen what McDonald's has done to the rest of the world? It's not too late. Don't embrace McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken and all of this poison, which is what it is. Now the West is trying to get away from these horrible addictions. And I see it coming into India. And I'm like, no, you kept it clean so far. Stay where you are. You're doing great. Now, don't make that choice of McDonald's. What are you doing? Eat a banana. Eat an apple. You've got all the best fruits in the world over there. Eat a mango. Keep it fresh. Keep it real. And instantly, you're impacting something. Your long-term well-being is sustainable. Yes, and it doesn't take you. On your home yesterday only i was watching a video on uh, some facebook or some other place where uh, the, uh, the small kids in us were unable to eat uh, vegetables and they were just simply crying and in india as you said that's part of our conscious choice or even unconsciously we are eating vegetables. Oh, yes. it's since, built into our since, society since childhood, since childhood. Yeah. So that's what i'm saying that we have we have so deep-rooted, we've got such beautiful, deep-rooted habits and principles and learnings that we are unlearning too quickly and forgetting and disregarding because we're chasing something, the illusion that is better. When, when you step back, it's an absolute mess outside of what we've got there. What we have is magic. And I want to inspire. So that's why the full circle, that's why we're having this conversation. I am so passionate to bring this message back into India and saying, listen, you don't need to look elsewhere for greatness, for magic. We have all of it. India is the most colorful, vibrant, alive, happening place on planet Earth right now. And I'm talking about somebody that's, I travel everywhere. I've been to over 100 countries around the world over the last 23 years, have uh, you know seen everything in every form. And when I go to India, I feel it. You step off the plane and it's in the vibration, it's in the air, it's in, the, it's in every smile of every human being that you come across, not based on what they have and what they don't have. And it's weird because it really is conflicting, right? Because you see absolute poverty and then absolute wealth and nothing in the middle. <clears throat> and it's heartbreaking, but even in all of that poverty, the, the, the people on the streets that have nothing are happier and more vibrant and alive and connected to their their inner God than the people that are busy chasing things. And I'm not <clears throat> saying either is, the, I'm saying there's a, there's a ground in the middle where everybody can meet, where we've got it. We've got it all there waiting to be just kind of re, uh, re-engaged with and not taken for granted. But it's about creating that balanced lifestyle where you can have it all without having everything. There's a big difference. Having it all versus having everything. People think it's about having everything no, it's about having it all. Thank you very much, Kalpesh. I think uh, that's a very long discussion. We'll be carrying on this discussion in the next. <laughs> For next sure, I'd love to. Because I look forward to it. that's a deep discussion we would like to go ahead with. Because there are deeper insights. There are deeper yes. insights through your journey mm-hmm. and even my journey of entrepreneurship. The people. Mm. Who uh, people could learn something. People could even uh, we may. The objective is to help out corporate professionals, to help out entrepreneurs who are hungry for success. What can yeah. they do in their present job 
or the present business and how to think out of the box yeah it's an the debate is unending plus mm-hmm. plus what i would like to say is because there have been the downfalls in your life there has been ups and there has been downs in your life yeah. but still you are mm-hmm. in the show the way it should be managed for me sure. i was into job till 2014 mm-hmm. and since 2014 only i stepped into entrepreneurship so entrepreneurship is not something that came to me instantly it came to me after mm-hmm. lot many years so thank you uh, kalpresh uh, uh, my pleasure you. we'll carry on with the discussion next time thank you very yeah, much for the people who are watching right now we seek your comments what mm-hmm. more you would like to learn from kalpesh life or what more you want to ask from my life there is much more to learn there is much more to share what more you want which part of the story is actually helping you which part of the story is connecting with you thank you very much kalpesh that's all for the oh, day let's connect next time thank you for sure take care